Hi again, Pete from Record on the BM16. We've done the top slide, now we're going to do the slide that moves um, your mortise left and right. So we'll, we'll go back stripping this one down, cleaning it down, and then putting it back together again. So it's quite a quick process, not too difficult. So what we need to do is just remove the um, countersunk screw underneath the rack here. So if you just move that to the edge, you can do it with um, a standard key, or if you've got a T-bar one, just go underneath and fetch that one out. So just quickly fetch that out, and it's actually sitting in the actual rack um, tuff itself in one of the in one of the gaps there. So just a uh, countersunk screw. And your trace, so you don't lose it. Slacken off your uh, transport screw, and also this screw. If you're doing repetitive kind of mortises, all in the same place all of the time, you got your setup all done. You take your lever out there anyway. But if you want a safety one, just lock that off. Then what it'll do is it'll make it that rigid, same as when it came to you in the transport, so if you're just doing repetitive mortises you've got a lot to do, whatever, you can lock the table off so as you know you're not going to knock it and move your position, but you can also do on that on the travel screws as well you can put those stops and put your, your, um, your depth strokes or your stroke adjusters, you can lock those off in position as well so as you don't get any movement so slacken that one off first and then same, much the same as what we did on the other one, we take these screws out. It's the same sort of principle, got three screws, and the centre one has got the same sort of location as your side one. So these two are just pushing up onto the strip, and the centre one is in the location um, hole on the actual jib strip itself. Just move those out of the way, and I can take the strip out and then just show you how the table comes off. So this face, like I say, has already been done. So take care of that when you when you do your work on the next one. So get it get it round. Maybe put some. Just so as you don't pick any muck up. Put a bit of that on. Now that comes out easy. The running face again, it's shiny, and then you've got the actual dimple position uh, for your um, grub screw to go in. So that's kind of lo uh, um, locating it. And then you've got two little marks on there, which is where the other grub screws are just um, locating and pushing over. So now the table itself will just come off. So you've got your rack and pinion, this is all nice and free now because you took the jib strip off and the jib strip is what makes it possible, positive. Take that off and that's the face I've already cleaned so I'm just going to put that on there. So that's not going to pick anything up. Again, all we're going to do is just clean this up. The actual gear itself is just located with a 6mm cap screw, so just pinch that up, make sure that's okay, and have a look at the gear itself. If you start to clean the teeth out in the position where your grubs, um, cap screw is, you know where you are. But just give that a clean out inside, remove any bits and pieces, just check to see if there's any bits loose in there. This one's not too bad, there's no real amount of grease in there. It just makes it all nice and clean. Again, you can check the condition of the teeth, it should be alright. But if you can see any lumps or anything like that, just give them a little clean off. If you've got a fine stone or a file, you can just give them a little trim. But these are all pretty good, so don't need much in there. Then onto the tops itself. I 
I only swill this off with a bit of spray just to clean the stone so I've got no muck on there to transfer onto my working face and all I'm going to do with that is rub across the top and circle motion again if there's any high points, any lumps it will soon fetch them out I'm not taking any excess material off this, so I'm not going to cause any extra wear to this. I'm just cleaning the faces up. Get a little bit of wet and dry. And I'll just clean up until it, the actual angles themselves. And just gently feel to see if you can feel any rough parts. There's anything a little bit rough on there, just give it a little trim as we've shown before. So, all I'm doing is putting a little bit of a shampoo along that face there, it's a little bit on the sharp side, but not much. Probably being a little bit fussy. I think you might as well check it if you can. The cast iron is always going to be mucky. You always get this black stuff off there, but it's just the it's just like running up and down, rubbing against the faces, and it will get dirty. Nothing to worry about, it's just just the nature of the material that's being used. What you want to avoid is too much muck going inside and just making it tighter or if it's all um, loose and you've got a bit of rock in there you can adjust it up on the on the strips anyway but if you want to uh, just give it a little clean out it doesn't take very long and you're not going to lose anything you're not going to lose any settings on the rack itself you're only working between a position, you've got a lock position there and a lock position at the end so it can't, you can't lose anything so to speak, you can't lose any of your settings the only thing is when you actually build the machine back up again is just setting your strip up so the feel of the slide moving backwards and forwards is comfortable to you and it's how you want it to be Front face, you've got the three grub screw, uh, three holes for your um, grub screws. So just make sure there's no burr or anything across those. So everything we're using here is not very aggressive, apart from the file that I'm just trimming the edges with. So everything afterwards is nice and smooth.
So even though we've cleaned it a couple of times, it's still, it's still dirty. So like I say, it's, that's just the nature of the cast iron. Have a look at your centre rack as well. Make sure that's all okay. No muck in there as such. You can check your screws that hold the rack in place. They're just pinched up. They're into a slot anyway. It's into a machine slot anyway. So it shouldn't really be any problem with it. And like I say, on this, you've actually got... Um, it's drilled in between the teeth of the rack, so that's your location um, for your uh, countersunk screw when you put it back on. So it can only really go back on one way, and you've got that to the front as well. So all we need now is a little bit of oil. He says you can find it. Oh, good enough. Smidgen on there, a little bit on this hook. All I'm going to do there is put it over the faces. And I can put that back up. So introduce it at the back and then put it on, and up to the up to the rack. And the rack and take it forward. So you can only go as far as a stop on that side and then we're going to introduce the stop screw back into there again. Up. So that's my. I'm back against that back face. So I've got that back in position again. So all I look now is at the jib strip. Much the same as the other one. Just check your ends first. There's no lumps on there. And this is the back face which I was telling you about, which has got the location for your first grub screw, the centre grub screw. And then you've got two little witness marks on there, which are from the two side ones where it putting the pressure on. Just give those a flatten off, only just to take that high spot off. Now what we do is I just clean the top of the strip there, only because I can feel it's a little bit on the it's a little bit sharp there, but nothing much. Clean up with a stone. My ends. So all I'm doing is getting rid of the rough fences on there. So in, it's very tactile now. It's all nice and clean. You can see your working face which slides up and down. It's got the polished finish on there. What you can do with that is just give it a little clean. down so we're not going to transfer any muck back inside again. I'll just put a little bit on there. It doesn't need much on the back face anyway. It's just your working face. And the grip screw, your strips across, take it down, equal it up in your fingers and then you should, in theory, been back in the hole with the grub screws located so I've got that in position there so just take the first screw put that back in and we all start on the centre one rather than at the ends left or right only so as you don't tilt the table we're pushing it across in a 
in a one position or well, one way this way so we're just taking her across and I'll just make it a little bit easier when you're resetting it back up again because like I said uh, previously you're going to set this back up to your feel so if I take that across now I'm basically taking the, uh, the whole strip across and I'll put the other two in Do with those two, take them across and then use them back. Same as that one. And like I said, this is basically setting this up to your feel. You want it positive so you've got no rock in the in the in the slide, but you want it so it's it's easy enough for you, so you can adjust it yourself to suit. So if I just ease that back a little bit. Maybe a little bit too tight. See how easy it is to adjust it over? So then you can, just like I say, adjust that to your feel. Um, and when you do the final lock up on it, take the screws across the face. What you want to try and avoid to do check it and what we want to do now is hold that grub screw in position with the spanner take the nut up and pinch it off what I'm not doing is allowing the grub screw to drag it forward so then in theory that should stay in position you'll find if you don't put an allen key in there you'll drag the grub screw in and that will make it a little bit tighter. So there you go, you're all set back up again on that.